Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday, so we are back with another Mystery Sampler Block. How are you all doing today? Welcome everybody, my name is Brady. Hopefully you've uh, been here before. If not, welcome. This is our mystery uh, sampler that we are doing using our guidelines rulers with the finished size add-on rulers, which are just super fun. Um, we are in block five, you can see. I've got the four prior blocks on display. I looked up my prior patterns, everybody, so that I could see what my prior blocks had been. So week one, we did the card trick block. And I got to admit, I was a little bit nervous about that one because I had never done it before. And someone had told me before that it was a really hard block to make. So I'll admit it was went together pretty easy, but what got me was the layout. So like I always say, put everything back where it belongs and then sew and then put it back, stay organized, keep yourself laid out so that you don't make little mistakes. Block two was this um, friendship star that I did in the two tones of pink. And week three, we did this cute little pin meal, pinwheel. I am struggling today, guys. I was trying to do up the PDF and I was typing everything incorrectly and I'm speaking incorrectly today. I'm a little bit off. So I just wanna warn you now, if I start saying crazy stuff, You've been warned. So pinwheel variation was week three, and uh, I just had never seen it with these neat little accents built into the corners. So I just kept it as a pinwheel because obviously that's what it is. And um, I also did a different version of that one. I'll show it to you quickly. With red in the corners, and I just switched around the colors. So that was my tip of the day that week is that you can just switch up the placement of your colors to make things look a little bit different. This is only gonna be a 12 block quilt, so in order to make it a little bit bigger, you may repeat some of the blocks that you like. Maybe the hard ones, we can leave them out and just repeat the ones that we like. Last week we did this one here and I just called it a, um, what did I call it? Peppermint wheel, that's what it was, because it looked like a candy to me. And then I had a big confession last week that I had made this one incorrectly. And yes, one of my viewers won this last week. I'm sorry, I haven't gotten it out to you yet. We will get it signed and get it in the mail today. But I wanted to show you how I had made an error and I made this block just a little bit too big. So that's why it made a good giveaway. I should quilt it and bind it and send it to you finished. Ah, uh, no, this way you can throw it into a quilt. So we are back this week with the um, churn dash block. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we posted this block and a few people came back and said, hey, that's actually called the hole in the barn door. And I had heard of that, but I didn't know that the two were the same. So whatever you know it as, that's what you can call it. It's your quilt. You can do what you want. So you can see that my block here is not yet pieced together. I took the day off yesterday and made hundreds of cookies when I should have been here sewing, but um, everybody enjoyed my cookies. And I even brought some here to the shop for others to enjoy as well, but uh, I had to have a baking day with my kids. So that's why the instructions aren't quite ready yet. I've got them almost finished. I just have to break down the step-by-step -step of how to put it together. And then we will get that email to all of you this afternoon. If you've not signed up for the blocks yet, you can visit us at sparrowquiltco.com or there, is there a link above the video, Well, Okay, or there's a link above the video that will take you to the sign up page. Just enter your email address and we will start emailing you weekly with a reminder about this video as well as sending you the PDF pattern so that you can follow along. Now at the beginning I mentioned that we are using some special rulers and they are called guidelines for quilting. And they're a really neat ruler because they are I guess what you could call modular. You can build them, you can add two of them together to make your ruler extra long. You can put two of them side by each and make your ruler extra wide. And you can also add on neat little tools such as these finished size quilting seam allowances. The idea behind all of this is that you set your slider on your ruler to the number you want your finished size block to be, and then you add the seam allowance separately. And that doesn't seem so hard when we're just dealing with a straight forward half inch seam allowance, typical for um, 
squares, rectangles, etc., in quilting. But when we're dealing with triangles, that's when the math starts to get a little bit weird and a little bit um, difficult. When we are adding on seam allowance for half square triangles, we want to add 0.854, which is impossible to do with our regular, say, alphas or omnigrids. Even the guidelines rulers doesn't have those fine increments on it. But this little seam allowance add-on factors in that 0.854 and then all I have to remember is my finished size. So the reason I chose this block today is because everything we've been doing up till now has been pretty straightforward. We've done say fractions of a square on the triangle but I haven't done any rectangles so that's why I decided to do this one today to show you how you can split up our columns to allow for rectangles. All right, are you all ready to begin? Where's everybody watching from today? Please leave me a comment. What's that? Texas. The whole state of Texas is watching? <laughs> Welcome. I know there's a lot of quilters in Texas. Denison. Denison? Denison. Okay, that sounds familiar. I wonder if I know somebody there. No, my friend Connie lives in Denman, which I think is near... Dallas? Mm, I don't know. That's the one I haven't been to. Been to Austin, been to Houston a couple of times. All right. I, I'm a flake today, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what is going on. My brain is just not got any steam. I'll get there, though. Okay, bear with me. Be patient. Um, who has been following along? What's that? <laughs> Mesquite, Texas. I'm not kidding. There are so many quilters in Texas. I probably told you guys before about Matt and I went out to the coast for a weekend and we went on this little um, boat tour and we ended up on an island having dinner and one of the gals, well two of the ladies were there, were sisters, they were from Texas and of course one of them was a quilter so just funny where, um, where life takes you and where you will meet quilters just in the strangest places. All right, so for this block, we are gonna need two fabrics. You can see that I did mine in white and a green polka dot. As you know, I all, I, I all know I love my polka dots. Oh, that's where I was leading up to a moment ago. See, fruit fly, hmm, hummingbird brain. If you have been following along and if you've been making your blocks, we would love to see them. If you belong to the Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily Group, please post your pictures there. If you don't belong to the group and you just want to share your photos, then you can send them to us on our Facebook page through the inbox. You can also email them to us at info at sparrowquiltco.com. And hopefully you don't mind if we share them on our social media because we love to talk about our followers and how awesome their work is. So, um... Like I said, we would love to see your blocks, so please submit them so that we can see them and be proud of you and all your hard work. For those of you that are watching and you don't own these rulers, the instructions for regular ruler cutting will also be included on the PDF, so don't feel left out. Um, it's not some exclusive um, uppity club. You don't have to own the um, expensive tools or the uh, special tools. You just have to have regular rulers and a rotary cutter or however you cut fabric out. So I'm going to start with my whites. Um, I've already pre-cut my strips into the widths that I need. So now I'm just going to go ahead and cut them into the different sizes that I need. So this is going to be for my center square. So when I'm using the guideline rulers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my slider at the four inch mark. And then I'm going to attach my square ruler add-on. And I know it's square because it's got a little S at the top and at the bottom it says half inch seam allowance. These little suction cups uh, hold things in place really nicely. When you are uh, attaching it, just make sure that you lock those little levers so that it stays in place. Now this little strip has already been cut at the four inch mark with the add-on. So in total, it's four and a half inches. And now I'm just gonna turn and cut it the other direction, subcut it. And so I'm gonna end up with a four and a half inch square. All right, so let's just place that in the middle there, right on top of the other one. 
and I'm just going to put this over here out of the way because it's done now. Now I'm going to cut these little rectangles. So this time what I've done is cut a strip that is two and a half inches wide. So I want to talk for a minute about how I came up with that number. We know that we're making a block that is 12 and a half inches wide. Finished size, it's going to be 12, right? When it's sewn into the quilt and the seam allowances are sewn in and forgotten. So right now, or before it's all put together, it's going to be a 12 and a half inch block. So I know that this column is going to be four inches, four inches, four inches, because all together that adds up to 12. Then I've got my seam allowances on either side. So if I want to make a rectangle that is half the width of this column, then I know that that rectangle needs to be two inches wide, right? And I know that in this direction, these are also four inches tall. So this rectangle is going to be two inches by four inches. All right, so if you've got any questions, please ask me there in the comments. Landon will read the uh, questions aloud. But what I need to do is cut my strip at the two inch marking. I'm gonna put my little slider at the two inch and I'm gonna have my half inch seam allowance added on, the square seam allowance. And so I've cut my strip at two and a half inches wide. All right, then I'm going to turn that sideways and I'm going to cut rectangles now that are four and a half inches long. So before I cut, I'm going to move that slider now down to the four. And I've still got my seam allowance little guy on there. Now I'm going to cut those rectangles. My fabric is folded twice, so I've got four layers here and I need four rectangles. All right, there we go. So does that make sense, everybody? Did they have any comments or questions at all there, Elle? Not yet. Not yet, good, okay. Today I'm going to give away uh, the fabric kit to make this block. I've already got one made, I'm gonna make one myself. That means I've got an extra one. So I'm going to send you guys one of those. The second prize is going to be a guideline ruler set with the, no, no, I'm gonna do the add-ons for their regular rulers. The finished size seam allowance. So what we usually do during these videos is give away a prize. Today, what I'm gonna do is send you a set of these rulers that you can use on your regular six by 12. So if you've got one at home, I'm going to send these to you so that you can follow along and have fun making these blocks just like me. Yeah, we'll put it together. We'll send them a kit and we'll send them the ruler things. So the winner today is going to get the little fabric kit and also going to get the ruler add-ons for their ruler at home. Yay! It's always fun to win stuff, hey? I remember once when I was a kid, I won a giant candy cane. I was sick for days after that. Should not eat that much sugar. One person should not eat that much sugar. Well, they would fit on half of it, I guess. Gotcha. So the, in regards to fitting the strip cutting rulers, the ones that I'm sending you adhere, attach with just um, suction cups, you could probably attach them to any ruler, but they're, the limitation is that they are 12 inches long. So if you're putting them on a long ruler, a 12 or 24 inch ruler, you're only gonna have 12 inches of add-on. So it would still work, but you would just have to place it maybe in the center or something like just kind of in the middle, like that. I don't know, you'd have to experiment and see. I'm not sure, those strip cutting rulers are quite tall as well, so that might be a factor, a hindrance. Pardon me just a minute as I step away to put away my ruler. Okay, 
So now I have cut my center square. I've also cut my uh, white rectangles in the outer round. What I'm going to cut now are these white outer triangles. So what I do now is remove the square add-on. And now I'm going to put on my half square triangle add-on. So I'm looking for the ruler that has an H at the top and at the bottom it says 0.854. I always try to make these suction cups work without uh, the DNA, but it just works better when you give it a little lick or put a little bit of moisture on there. So I had mentioned earlier that I've already cut these strips. This one ended up being the full square. So I have my slider guide set at four and I've added my half square triangle add-on. And so now I've got a perfect square that is just the right size. I'm now going to turn those on the diagonal and I'm gonna cut it once from corner to corner. And that's gonna create those little triangles. All right, that go here and up top too. All right. Now I had a tip of the day earlier and I was gonna share it, I should have written it down. But speaking of sharing, what you're going to do in order to be entered for the giveaway is share this video. I forgot to mention that earlier when I was telling you what the prize is going to be. So we want to give away a set of the finished size quilting add-on rulers as well as a little fabric kit to make your own block just like this. So in order to qualify for that prize, you're going to share this video. And uh, underneath the video, you'll see the option to like, comment, or share. Just go ahead and hit share. And that will share with your Facebook friends and just get out the word about what we're doing here. Okay. Hey. Sorry about that, guys. Landon thinks she's got her all fixed up now. The other camera, is it okay? Now we're good again, Landon says. Okay, so we have cut out all our whites. We've got our square, our rectangles. We've done our outer triangles. Now I need to come back to my green fabrics. What I'm going to do first is cut my triangles because I still have my half square triangle ruler attached. Why not just be efficient and make that cut right now? Earlier, I cut the squares you see here, triangles you see here. So I've already got one that's at the right width. So I'll show you, it's exactly that wide. I went ahead and sliced that. Now I'm gonna turn it so that I can get, I'm gonna sub cut a couple of squares. <laughs> Is that my mic so scratchy like that? Oh, you could hear this terrible feedback sound. Sorry, Elle, what? Hi, Laura. Yay, oh, I'm so glad to hear that about the squaring up the blocks. It is shocking, isn't it, how much it helps. I never assume that my blocks are good anymore. I used to, and I used to be unhappy with my blocks, but if you check them all, sometimes it's just a hair you have to take off, but it's shocking how much that adds up over the uh, width of an entire project. So, my pleasure. I'm happy it helped. So now I'm just cutting this square on the diagonal, and that is going to create those inner corners that we have here on this block. Okay. Oh, that one's upside down. So let's set that in there properly. Now I remembered my tip of the day. 
Let me grab something quickly to show you. So the original churn dash that I did, I did a small one. And I thought it would be cool to share with you that you could also miniaturize these blocks and do four of them to create the 12 and a half inch block. This would be the right size. It would fit in with all my other blocks, but it is got four of them and therefore a lot more work. But that is my tip of the day is that you can be creative with these blocks and you can make them smaller and you could do, you know, several of them to take up the same amount of space. You just have to do a little bit more figuring out so that everything is half the size and therefore <clears throat> would be a little bit more interesting and um, could make your quilts a little bit bigger. That's where I was going with that. We had mentioned earlier that it's only going to be a 12 block quilt. So if you want to make it a little bit bigger, that's an idea for making it also a little bit more interesting and also giving you a bit more practice with these rulers, right? All right. So now the only thing that I've not cut yet are my little green rectangles. So this is going to be the same deal again. Have you got a question now? Yes, but, um, that cutting mat? My cutting mat is a double sided contrasting mat. Uh, isn't it awesome with the purple? It also has a side that's yellow. So if your fabrics don't show well on this side, you can flip it over and it's extra thick. So it lasts me a really long time. I had one of these that lasted me for years and years and years. And I finally set it aside because we had new ones in the shop, but um, they come in three different sizes. Yeah, it was still good was my point, but um, it just started looking a little bit rough because it had, it had cut a lot of fabric. That's for sure. So this is available, I think, in three different sizes. There's a small, medium, large, and an extra large. So that means there's four different sizes. And um, this one fits right into my table. So you can look these up on the website too. The tables are also available. What are the tables called, Elle? Do you remember? Anyways, it's called a two color contrasting, color contrasting cutting mat. And what I also love about these mats is that they're accurate. A lot of companies say don't rely on the lines, but this one, uh, Martelli brand, you can rely right on the, on the lines on the mat. It is very, very accurate. Okay, so we are getting to the rectangles in fabric number two. And I have cut a strip that is two and a half inches wide because again, they're rectangles. So I set my slider at two. And I've got my square add-on back on there. I took the half square triangle one off. I got the square back on, set my slider at two, add the half inch seam allowance. That gives me a strip that's two and a half inches wide. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to sub cut the rectangles at four plus the add-on, which means it's four and a half total. Okay. So here we are going across this time and that's going to give me four little rectangles because I had my fabric folded in half twice. I did. Yes. I think that would be really cute too. Really cute. So now I'm going to do one more fun little thing here. You've seen the block where the churn dash is done in green. Now we're going to flip it around and see it in white. So I'm going to cut an alternate square, an alternate center square. And then we're going to have two block layouts. And this time the churn dash will be white and the background will be green. I like to mix it up so it's not just the same one each time because I get bored of that. So let's take out this and we'll put this one in. And we're going to switch these around. And it's just a matter of flipping the position of everything. You would still piece it almost identical. The only thing that would really change is that you would cut the center square in the other fabric instead. Are you okay over there? Oh. 
<laughs> Lennon's beating up the equipment over there. So I just always like to look for alternate ways to do the same thing. <laughs> if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm. Oh, hi, Instagram. About to. About to. Okay. So, hi, Instagram. I'm just showing everybody how you can take the same block and just flip it around so that your background is now your uh, feature fabric. So this churn dash was uh, green. Now I flipped it around so that I've got the white as the churn dash. And all you really need is that extra square in the center. So you could cut out two at the same time, cut out one white, cut out one green, and then you could flip the look and have the opposite effect. Now the thing that I was showing everybody just a moment ago Instagram is that you could take the same block and miniaturize it and just make it a little bit more exciting. It would be fun to see this block miniaturized. Ooh, that would be really cute. It'd be a lot of work, but it'd be really, really cute. So if you were really struggling with it, you know, say using the finished size quilting rulers, you could just get out a piece of graph paper and you could just block out on the graph exactly what size everything needs to be and how the layout would go. This one too, oh my goodness, could you imagine condensing that one and doing four miniature? It'd be a lot of work, but it'd be super awesome, right? Or this one, ooh, card trick, little mini card trick, that would be fun. So now I'm gonna start sewing this together. I'm going to set aside one set for my winner today because I already promised that. Let's keep it all organized. So that reminds me to remind you to share this video. Share this video and you will be entered to win the prize that we're giving away, which is the fabric to make this block plus the add-ons for your ruler at home. So Instagram, come on and join us over on Facebook so that you can share the video. Right? It's just a little bit different. Sometimes I get bored with the same old, same old, so it's fun to just kind of look for an easy way to do things a little bit differently. But yeah, if you share this video on Facebook, you'll be entered into the draw, and at the end of the video, we will choose a winner, and then we will send you your prize, which is always fun. So I'm going to send my winner a white center. Yeah. All right, so that'll be for you, winner. Whomever you may be, we'll know soon. <laughs> I just love that one. I'm going to have to uh, see how crazy I can get as far as miniaturizing the rest of these blocks. That would be really fun. So let's go ahead and piece this together now. Essentially, the next step is going to be piecing each block. I often think of these as just a nine patch. Um, with more steps. So we're going to piece together all our half square triangles. We'll piece together these two little rail, rail units and then we'll put it together in rows. And before you know it, we're going to have a block. I'm just gonna sew standing up today. So what I'll do first is all my half square triangles in the outer corners. And then I can just put those back. Excel, smart, that's a good idea. Very smart. I love my graph paper for um, just getting the idea down and maybe sometimes if I can't quite work it out in my head, it helps a lot to see it. I have a ton of little field notes notebooks and a lot of them have graph paper on the inside. So they're all loaded, 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 loaded with quilt designs. If I see something while I'm out, I'll pull out my book and draw it. You never know when you're going to get inspiration. Excel, what a neat idea. Hmm. There's all kinds of quilt design software out there too. I've bought a few of them over the years and I still find myself coming back to my good old graph paper. 
Though it's nice to put the numbers right into the design, right into the software and have it spit out the requirements and that kind of stuff for you. Takes away a little bit of the work. So everybody, I've been meaning to do a little uh, chat on seam allowance. And I think everybody could, um, everybody could use a good reminder every once in a while about their seam allowance and just making sure that we are being accurate. For me, the biggest thing is making sure that you're accurate throughout a single quilt. It doesn't necessarily matter if your seam allowance is a little bit wide, but if it's going to be wide, make sure it's consistently wide throughout the entire project because that's when things start going wrong is if you're trying to match seam allowances that weren't kept consistent. We talked about um, the seam allowance being out even just a thread and how it can add up over the course of a quilt. It really can have uh, a bad effect on the quilt making it turn out the wrong size. So further to uh, squaring all your blocks up, the step prior to that, further to that is prior to that, um, you want to make sure that your seam allowance is accurate. So if you don't have a quarter inch foot, some quarter inch feet have a little guide on them that helps you stay on track. Uh, I usually rip that guide off and just use the actual edge of my foot. But some people actually need that physical barrier that, uh oh, what did I do? Some people like the physical barrier that that guide creates. If you don't have that on your foot, you can purchase uh, rulers that stick to the bed of your sewing machine and therefore form barrier, which you can sew up against but you definitely want to make sure that your seam allowance is a quarter inch wide. And what that means is from the, where your needle drops to the raw edge of the fabric. So I'm going to show you here on this piece. Let's do it on the ver reverse. Hopefully you can see my thread better on the green from where my thread is to the raw edge of the fabric is exactly a quarter of an inch. And I really do my best to keep that line as straight for the entire piece that I'm sewing. And what can happen sometimes, especially with triangles, is that the seam allowance at the beginning or the end can kick out and the fabric doesn't feed through properly and the seam allowance can get narrower or wider. And so again, that becomes frustrating because when you lay your block out, the edges from here to here aren't accurate. The center is accurate. And again, down here might be off. So that's where squaring our blocks up afterwards becomes really beneficial because it helps us repair those mistakes that we made in the actual piecing. So if you've got any questions about seam allowance, I hope that you'll leave them for me there. But like I said, it's always good to have it at a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to try and move my iron over here so I can press these little bitty pieces. Hi Matt. Laura says she has problems with the diagonal seam on half square triangles. Yes. Yeah. It does stretch often. Um do them the other way. Do the multiple ones through a square and then Yes, so Landon is just suggesting for the half square triangles, we get a lot of stretching across the center because it's on the bias. And the bias just means that that's where the um, fibers, that the weave of the fabric, it uh, meets. And so when we cut it on the angle, we're actually creating um, weave that looks like this, you know, obviously much denser threads going in each direction, but they had come out like this. And then if you pull on that, they just, they're very elastic and they just stretch really, really easily. So what I almost always do when I'm piecing my half square triangles is I use two squares and we'll take our two squares and we'll put them so that they're right sides together. And then you need to mark a line on the diagonal from corner to corner. Once you have that line, you're going to sew a quarter inch on either side of it. 
And then you can trim it apart right on the line that you've drawn. And that way, when you're sewing, when your material is subject to the feed dogs, it's still in its stable condition. It hasn't been separated yet, and so there's nothing to stretch. It will actually um, stay a lot more stable if you sew it in that way uh, and prevent the stretching and distorting that you are talking about. So that's usually how I sew my triangles. Most of my sewing life, I have done everything I could possibly do to avoid piecing triangles. And the good thing about this system is that it's kept me really, really precise and accurate. But that is still a risk because we are dealing with that bias edge. So this is my little, um, well, this is a part of the three-piece roundabout set. This has a rotating base that's like a turntable, like a record player. And I can um, actually spin my um, pressing. And it also comes with a little cutting mat. And that's where I really love the turntable because sometimes if you're squaring a block and you want to trim it but you don't want to disturb it, you can trim two sides and then you can rotate the whole thing and trim the other two sides. So that is really a cool little tool. I clearly do not have the turntable here at the moment, but this is um, just the right size. When I'm doing these videos to show you guys stuff, I can kind of chuck it out of my way when I don't need it. All right, so let's set that over there. Did we flip this around? Yes. So what you need to know is the finished size. I know that these need to be four and a half inches square. So if I was just cutting those um, off the top of my head, I think I would cut those five. And then when you, yeah, yeah, I would cut my squares five inches. I would sew down the center with the two quarter inch <laughs> seam allowances on either side. And then you could trim it down the center and that should get you a square that is four and a half inches. You need to cut it bigger so that you can trim it down because that's just how you have to do half square triangles with that method. You, there's no markings on our ruler that would get it the exact size. Like I, my cutter is an ergonomic rotary cutter and it is, oh, it's a hand saver, that's for sure. You guys are loving all these uh, Martelli products today. So ergonomic rotary cutter, and that's the two color motor rotary mat and the uh, three piece roundabout set. They're all from the same company, which is pretty cool. And they're all on the website there. Maybe Landon will be nice and share some links for you. Oh, they can't click the links, gotcha, okay. So all my little half square triangles are put together. Did we get all the questions in regards to that or was there any more? Okay. So I guess the one thing about the half square triangles is that method feels like a bit more work, but it is very precise and it is very stable. So that is the good thing about it. And we'll never switch back. <laughs> That's awesome, Stephanie. I love mine too. My hands just used to hurt so much. How do I have an extra one there? Hmm. I must be missing one over here. So these little rails, putting these together is super simple. We'll just zip our way down the side. Again, making sure that we're using our seam allowance, our quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you're watching the actual edge of your foot when you're sewing. Don't watch your needle. It's actually really tiring to your eyes to watch your needle. So keep your eye on the fabric lined up to the edge of your foot.
if you're looking for some sort of seam allowance um, helper, there is the Ideal Seam Guide on our website and it goes with the Ideal Seam Gauge. I found those really beneficial when I was teaching children to sew. Because they're such nosy little things, you know, like it's hard for them to stay focused on the fabric. So if they have like a physical barrier like that, and it's just a neat little ruler that you attach right onto the bed of your machine. And it just helps them stay on track with a little less effort. All right, so let's press all these little rectangles now and I'm pressing everything to the darker green fabric. Make sure you use a high contrast for this one. I was going to do it in blue, but it just wasn't quite strong enough. And I don't want to go to all this hard work and not have it show well. I hope you've had a chance to share the video so that you can be entered into the prize giveaway. Just a reminder that we're going to be giving away a set of the ruler add-ons for your rulers that you already own at home. Plus I'm going to send you the little fabric kit to make this block just like mine. You can have a green and white churn dash too. <laughs> yes, Stephanie, it is. <laughs> That's so funny. That is a good uh, way to describe it. <laughs> We'll just rail you into success. <laughs> Continue. The cutter, for left or right, or the cutter comes in blue for left-handed. So in that situation, the handle is on the reverse. And um, you can use it with your left hand. So yes, you must order specific to the hand you are. Don't, don't order by color preference. Red is for right-handers left or blue is for left handers so make sure that you are ordering the correct one so now i am ready to start sewing this little block together in rows if you use your regular rulers then i want you to remember to trim these down to four and a half inches in the instructions i had you cut them out at five and piece them together trim them down to four and a half and then we are going to start sewing these together and I really do recommend having your triangle on top because that angle, that angular seam coming out the corner there can be problematic. So keep your straight fabric on the bottom. I always like to have my seams on top, then I can control them better. Pardon me, I'm so sorry for sneezing in your faces. Absolutely you could. That's a great idea. As far as the rails, you could sew one long strip. So you'd need four and a half, twice is nine, twice again is 18. So you could cut a strip that was two and a half by 18. One green, one white, or whatever your colors are. Sew those together, and then you would cut those into four and a half inch chunks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your sneeze blessings. So this is what I'm talking about when I say bring it back over to your layout just to make sure that you're putting it together correctly. Um, this is always where I make the most mistakes where I'm sure I've got it arranged correctly and then it turns out I do not. So I highly recommend having a little... <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you for all the blessings. I suspect it's going to be a sneezy day around here. There's so much smoke in the air. It, it looks like the sun didn't even come up this morning. It was so uh, orange and yellow outside. It's really bizarre. Looks like a giant dust storm came through. So my center row, I'm probably going to press towards my green. So this row here, I'm going to press towards the outer blocks. It's going to show somewhere, so we got to press them. Just lay 
flatter and nicer when we do that. So there's my bottom row put together. Now I'm going to join my middle row. So we're getting pretty close to wrapping it up here, guys. Take one more opportunity to share this video and that will get you entered into the draw for a fabulous prize. And please remember to send us your blocks. We really want to see them. Now, did you join us last Friday for Stash Busters? We started a rag quilt. It was designed by uh, my friend Sheila Vanderlinden. And so we're going to be getting back to that this Friday at 1030 on the Facebook page. So don't forget to join us for that. My thread's in the wrong place. And so that's another free pattern that's on the website. So you can sign up for that. Look for Stash Busters on the website at sparrowquiltco.com. And you can see all the prior videos we did as well. We have been doing these patterns and tutorials ever since January. So there is a lot of um, videos and tips on the website there that you can tune in and watch. And soon we've also got a, a series on learning how to quilt coming up. So that block I pressed towards the inside, this bottom block I pressed towards the outside, this one again will go to the outside, and then these seam intersections are going to match up really nice when the time comes. If you had to choose one topic of quilting that really gave you the worst trouble, that you had the most, uh, that you had the hardest time with, what would it be? I always thought for people it would be um, machine quilting, which is a very, very popular answer, I might add. But for a lot of people, it's choosing fabric and patterns. So that was a big surprise to me. recommend a thread cutter that sticks to your machine. We have um, these little guys on the website. They're called thread cutters and it's got a little bit of 3M tape on the back so it just you know will stick right to your machine. They also come in a ring format so you can just wear it on your hand and if you like to do hand stitching or maybe you just like to cut it off your hand instead of on your machine. So there's two different options uh, currently available. They're really nice. I had them when I took a couple of flights recently and um, I always worry about losing my expensive scissors. So uh, it was nice just to throw that little ring in my little stitching bag. And, uh, and Customs doesn't look at it or security or anything. They just do not see it as a threat. Is the rag quilt the one with layers of flannel? Yes, a rag quilt is the one with layers of flannel. Yes. Squaring up box. Binding, mm. How to quilt, yes. Oh, mitered corners, just throw them in the garbage. <laughs> oh, mitered corners in binding, Kate. Okay. That's not so bad. I don't like mitered borders. <laughs> Did I give myself away? Two comments now. Fabric, choosing fabric for. Kate, yeah. I do have a physical store. We're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and we are on 75th Street. You were talking about this month, a lot of people are like, you in California? Oh. Five comments We're in Canada, so just to our west is uh, BC. Just across the provincial border into BC, um, there are lots of forest fires. Actually, all the way to the end of the coast, there's forest fires all over that province. So, and the smoke just pours into our area every summer. Yeah. Well, even way up north, like Grand Prairie, uh, which is, you know, a good five, six hours away from us, they are loaded with smoke as well. Hello to Ireland. My goodness. 
The World Wide Web is an amazing thing. I'm now going to join my two rows together. I already mentioned how I pressed my seams in opposite directions. So now when I go to match up my seams, one points this way, the other points this way, they just meet up in the middle and it makes just a beautiful little matching up point. Everything lays nice and flat. I love to use fork pins. I haven't talked much about fork pins in this series, but all of you in my Stash Busters followers, you all know about the, stat, the fork pins. The fork pin is a double-ended pin. You can see it's got a bit of a U-turn at the top there. It's not on that one. Oh. <laughs> so I'm just going to lay it in my palm so you can see it a little bit better. You see it there? Good. So yes, it's just a pin with a U-turn and it's got two sharp, 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 sharp points. They will enter your skin of your hand just like butter. So please be careful. Uh, I love to use these at seam intersections. So let's see if I can pull off a little demo that you can see here. I have got my bottom piece, the seam is pointing to the left, and my top piece, the seam is pointing to the right. And when I match those up, I just bring them so that they're just kissing one another. They're just in nice and tight. And so then what I'll do is put this fork pin in right around the quarter inch mark, or maybe just above it even, because I have to stitch, push it in and push it out. And I am just on either side of the seam that I have already sewn. And that U-turn at the top of the pin just brings those intersections so that they touch very, very nicely. And that will ensure that no intersection will mismatch again. They will always match up just beautifully. And I have done several Bargello style quilts and it is worth it to pin every single intersection. I had one that I did as queen size and I didn't own enough fork pins to make it up the entire thing. So I would sew half of it, unpin and repin the whole bottom part portion of it. But every intersection on that quilt is beautifully lined up. So I do feel that it's worth it. A lot of me people I meet don't want to put the effort in and that's fine. It's their quilt. But I like to, for my projects, try and get it as precise and accurate as I can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. We do sell the fork pins. They should be on the website. They're made by Clover, so you could just search on the Sparrow Quilt Co. website, uh, Clover Fork Pins. They're just the best. I just love them. Hey, so we're almost done this block, guys. I'm going to ask Landon to choose me a winner because I want to send someone these rulers and this little fabric kit. Keep those handy for just a second. I'm going to pin this next intersection together. This one I'm just going to press to center. It um, won't matter much. Oh, I like this green background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're making fun of me. <laughs> All right. So again, my intersections are facing opposite directions. So I'm just going to use my fork pins to match those intersections up and keep them in place. Now, I know some of you are probably gasping. Ah, she sewed right over those pins. And I do. I take my time when I'm sewing over pins, but I do sew over pins. I really, I don't see the point of going to all the trouble of pinning and then pulling it out right before it sews because then the accuracy doesn't stay. So I just gently and slowly sew over the pins and that way all my hard work lines up like I want it to. So between pinning and keeping your seam allowance nice and consistent, you are, pardon? Okay. Okay. 
say it a lot a little bit. Patty Bean. Patty Bean, you are our winner today. Congratulations, Patty. So Patty, here's what I need from you, please. Could you please send me a message there on Facebook in the inbox? Don't post this stuff publicly on the stream, on the video. You're going to send us a private message. I need you to include your shipping address, your email address, your uh, phone number, and just include I'm block five winner. Get the finish size rulers and the fabric kit. Send me a little message that's got all that info in it so that we can get you your prize. And congratulations, Patty. Thanks for watching. So let's press this last seam. I'm going to press it to the center as well. Ah, oh, nice and fresh, right? The nice fresh colors. Ooh, so I am always at a 2.5 when I'm piecing, usually. If I'm using any sort of paper involved, I'll go down to a 2. But I am using a 2.5. And like I said, when I go over the actual pins, I just slow right down. And then instead of impacting at a high speed and breaking the pin, it will usually just deflect off to the side. I have hit pins lots of times, but I very rarely break them. What's that, fork pins? Yeah, I agree, Laura. Because there are some stuff in, like, ooh, like matching plaids and stuff that might be more beneficial to have two little. Uh... <laughs> Do you like this look, guys? Does it tell the world I'm a quilter? <laughs> Patty, Landon really likes the quilt in your profile picture. Oh. <laughs> You should, it's like a quarter of an inch square. That's all she can see. <laughs> you should see her hunched over the screen. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. It's always fun to sew with you guys, even though it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird how I feel like I'm with all my friends while I'm sewing in this room. Um, okay. So Lennon's just bringing me the quilt. This is the rag quilt that we started working on last week. We cut out all the fabrics and I did finish getting them all cut out. So this week what we're gonna do is sew the little quilt sandwiches together. If you've never done a rag quilt before, join us Friday. I'm gonna be going over how to make all those little quilt sandwiches and look, it is a different color on the back. We use this beautiful line of Marcus flannels. They're called Primo plaids. They are absolutely gorgeous. Turn it around so we can see the whole thing. We'll just trade places. There we go. Isn't that pretty? So we did get the kits together, and uh, we will have those on the website for Friday morning for those of you that are interested. But I'll be sharing lots of tips and tricks on how to quilt those individual little pieces because we're going to quilt as we go, <coughs> which is the idea of right quilts. So that will be Friday morning at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time on the Facebook page. And don't forget to join us next Wednesday for the next block in the series of the Mystery Sampler. I will have the PDF ready for this uh, shortly, and then we will get that out to all of you who have been watching. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we will see you on Friday and next Wednesday. Take care, everybody, and bye for now.